Hey everybody, Jason here. Welcome back to another tutorial. So today we are going to be recreating this particular animation. Uh, fantastic animation done by Marcello Amenesis. Probably butchering that, I apologize. But check out his work. Uh, it's really, really good stuff. Some great inspiration. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to be recreating. Uh, we're just not going to be doing audio. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to simplify this slightly. We're not going to do this uh, sort of like 3D effect here um, just because it's not necessarily sort of like within the realm of what we're covering at the moment. Um, so yeah, let's identify the assets that we need to make and then we're going to dive into Illustrator and just recreate these. All right, so nice and simple, big black ball, small yellow triangle, rounded rectangle, blue ball, and then a corner, uh, corner rectangle. Okay, did I say around a triangle? I don't know, today is one of those days. All right, so we're gonna jump into Illustrator and uh, we're gonna take our HDTV 1080 preset. All right, um, and then this is what we'll be working with. Cool. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we'll sort of just generate that ball. So I'll label my very first layer as uh, black ball. And let's grab our tool over here, all right, our rectangle tool, and then our ellipse tool, shortcut for that is L. And I'm just going to sort of drag this out. I hope that you can see it. Um, let me actually just generate a background for you guys super quickly. Um, we'll just make it white for now. All right, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, now hopefully we'll be able to see it a little bit better. All right, so. Black ball, L shortcut for my uh, for my sphere, my circle, and I'm just going to make that gray for now. And I'll turn off uh, turn off my stroke as well. Cool. Uh, so there we go. Holding down Shift for a perfect circle, and I can hold down Spacebar to move that around. And we'll sort of make a size like that. Okay. Cool. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to leave it as is. And I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt, and you'll see that I get a double arrow head. All right, so when I drag that, I'm duplicating it. And if I hold down Shift after I've selected it, I can move it along. Perfect X and Y axis. All right, so this ball over here, I'm going to apply Gradient to, simply by clicking on this little button. And you'll see that it opens up our Gradient tool. I'm just going to put that up here. All right, and you can see that we're naturally set to Linear Gradient, and we've got excuse me radial gradient and then we've also got the sort of like multi-point freeform gradient which uh, we won't be taking a look at today but those are our options all right so we now have our sort of, um, sort of uh, gradient sphere going on and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select my gradient tool uh, shortcut for that is g and i'm actually just going to click and drag to redraw my point uh, Okay, so obviously I need to click from the center. Uh, so let's do that. And this way I'm just not getting like that massive dark outline. I sort of prefer this, but whatever floats your goat. All right, so for those of you not familiar with the gradient tool, I can click and drag these points over here. They represent these points in my, uh, my gradient panel. All right, I have my middle slider as well to help sort of distribute that gradient. And then I also have access to these little blocks. And that means, uh, let me just move this out of the way. Center block allows me to change where the center of my sphere sits. All right, I'm gonna undo that. And if I move my black square out the way um, and I hover, I actually get a rotation tool. All right, which isn't really gonna help now, but um, yeah, uh, just so you know. Cool, so I have now applied my gradient and what I can do with that is, okay, my display is being strange again. Uh, let me just drag that back out, there we go. Okay. Um, so I can, like I said, move these points as I want, and I can actually also play um, with the opacity of that, right? So I can set the opacity for the dark part uh, as I see fit, and I can also then set the gradient for the white part, which we're not really going to see much of a difference at the moment. All right, so I've created this gradient, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to Effect, I'm going to go down to Texturize, and I'm going to add some grain. All right, so I apply the grain to my gradient, so that I have a little bit more control when it comes to um, the actual shape. All right, so just the amount of gradient that I'm applying to the shape at any given time. All right, so I can play with my contrast. You'll see that that increases or decreases the contrast, as it says on the box, and my intensity. 
All right. Uh, I can also then set my different types of grains. So I'm going to set it to soft. Um, so just from practice, I know that this works quite well. Uh, and we can play around with the intensity of that. And I'm just going to leave it like this for now. I can always change it later. Cool. So this is now what my sphere looks like. Um, and I can then just set it on top of my original sphere. Okay, so what we are then going to do is we're going to click on opacity up here and I can change my blend mode to something like multiply. All right, and already we're kind of getting that textured ball effect that we're looking for. If we're not happy with how that is, we now have three points of control for that uh, transparency or opacity rather. So I can adjust the actual opacity of the entire layer. Um, and I also then, as we saw, have control over the opacity of the actual gradient. Um, which gives me a lot more control as well. So let me just maybe jump that back up to like 70. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much my black ball for now. I'll have it nice and simple. Now when it comes to gradients, um, if you try to sort of adjust your gradient by going to um, sort of like the actual gradient panel and trying to apply a new one, you're not going to be able to. What we need to do is jump into appearance and uh, appearance shows sort of all the effects um, taking place on this shape. So you'll see that I have grain here and I can turn that on and off. And if I wanted to adjust my grain, I can simply click on the, the word grain, all right? And that'll bring me uh, to where I am and then I can adjust it as I see fit. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, that's now we've got our black circle um, or close enough. Then we're going to create our blue circle. Right. So what I can do for this is be a little bit lazy. So I'm going to select what I've already got. You'll see that these layers are inside. They are sub layers within the black ball layer. All right. We can tell that they're selected by these blue dots. OK. And this makes life very easy. So if I had 100 layers inside of this particular or sub layers rather inside this particular layer, I could simply click and drag what I wanted and I don't have to scroll through the entire thing looking for my layers and individually selecting them. All right, because now that they're selected, I can click this little um, sort of marker square on the layer itself and drag it to my new layer and it will move everything across. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these, hold down Alt, duplicate that, and you'll see now that I have a duplicate of those ellipses and I can drag them onto that new layer. I'll lock this layer so I don't actually mess with it. And now we can sort of just deconstruct this and remake it. All right, so I'm going to change this color to a nice blue, um, sort of just picking off the, the top of my head. But I am quite a fan of uh, sort of like a mix between blue and silver. So we'll just go with something like that, um, a little bit darker maybe. There we go. Cool. So now that I've created this ball, uh, I can obviously drop this back on top and already we've got our initial kind of gradient. All right, but it's far too intense. And if we take a look at our reference, you'll see that our gradient is kind of more of a, sh a drop shadow than anything else. Okay, so what we can do then is we can grab our gradient tool and I can actually shift where that gradient takes place. So if I move my white point higher up and then play with my middle point, you'll see that we can actually create a bit of a texture gradient there. Go back into my appearance. Uh, with it selected, let's click on grain quickly and let's just bring this contrast and intensity down just a little bit, uh, something like that. Okay, cool. So now we've already created our blue ball, nice and simple. I'm just going to scale that down to sort of try and stick with the, the look of our reference. Uh, next up, just a sort of um, a rectangle tool. We're going to just create our yellow square next. Uh, so we'll create a layer and we'll label that yellow square. Uh, <laughs> I can never t uh, sort of like actually square. Is that how you spell square? I don't even know. It's one of those days, like I said. Cool. So we're just going to create a, um, uh, a square and you'll see that it automatically applies gradients because we haven't turned off this effect yet. So I'll just turn that on there and I'm going to find a nice yellow for it. All right, so now because I was sitting on the, um, the the gradient tool, it's automatically set to black and white, which can be very frustrating because it's very difficult. At least I found it difficult to search online how to fix this. All right, but the nice simple step, we go to our color, 
we click this little drop down here, all right? Uh, and we'll see here that it's set to grayscale. All right, so now depending on what kind of file you're working for, we'll work with RGB. Now I can see my color. All right, so that's nice and set up. I can actually just rotate that to get it uh, where I need it, and I can just move these down. All right, so now that we've created our bowls, if we don't want to accidentally risk like pulling them apart and we don't want to keep dragging to select, what we can do is just grab them, unlock that quickly, and I'm going to hit Control or Command G, otherwise you can right click and you can say Group. All right, so now when I click it, they are attached essentially. You can do that, Command G, sorted. All righty. Uh, and then next up, we need our rounded rectangle. All right, so I'll grab my rectangular tool. Also, obviously, we have our rounded rectangular tool. Uh, whoa, way too far. <laughs> oh, where am I? There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to use the, the rectangle tool just to introduce you to... Um, to rounding the actual corners using the direct selection tool and the, um, the actual selection tool. So I'm just gonna draw this out something like so, and I'll just put it here for now. Okay, so with my shape selected, you'll see that we have these rounded sort of uh, little circles inside of our uh, points. So if I click and drag those, it's gonna round it out for us. Alternatively, I can also use my direct selection tool, shortcut is A, to select individual points to round out. All right, so this is a good way to sort of just make like fairly uh, stylized so, uh, shapes. Uh, so yeah, that option is available to you. So let's just round that out. There we go. Cool, so again, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this and I'm actually just going to, before I forget, create a layer and we'll call this rounded rectangle. Okay, and I'm going to apply a gradient to this one again. All right, so we're going to apply two different gradients for this one to recreate the effect. Um, we're going to start off with a linear gradient and I can just grab my gradient tool and I'm just going to drag it down like so. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a new point to my gradient line. All right, so I can do this by simply clicking below the actual gradient point. All right, so then that creates a new point for us. So I'll keep that light gray. Uh, whoops. Okay, cool. So I can actually show you this now as well. If you create a um, like a point by accident with it selected, just click the uh, the garbage or the trash bin, uh, and it will get rid of it for you. All right. So I'm going to make this side black as well. Uh, this side is obviously also set to black, and our center point we can then just shift our gradient out slightly. All right. And obviously that will be a little bit easier doing it over the actual piece, like so. Okay, so that is our first gradient. The next gradient that I'm going to make is an actual linear gradient. Oh, sorry, a <laughs> radial gradient. Uh, so again, grabbing my radial tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this point out to the very edge, all right? Uh, I'm going to delete the center point and I'll make my center white again. Um, and what we can do then is sort of just set it up like that. All right, so the reason I'm doing this is if we take a look, um, we do have that sort of drop shadow effect. I'm going to be creating a little bit more of a, a gradiized, gradiized, gradiented, whatever the term would be, version of this. And I would just wanna make sure that I get the ends of my rounded rectangle involved as well. Okay, so again, I'm going to jump into effect, texture, grain. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. So this effect retains the previous um, sort of pieces of information. So if you don't want your gradients to be exactly the same, you do need to sort of just jump back in and readjust as you sort of see fit. So we'll say okay to get to that. Let's just grab our grain quickly and equalize it. There we go. And we'll do the exact same on this one. So effect, texture, grain. Um, you can see that our intensity is way too high for this. So let's bring that down and our contrast down. And that's roughly what we're looking for. Okay, so let's drop these on top. We'll drop this one on top first. Uh, hit opacity, we'll set that to multiply. All right, um, and then I'll grab this one, drop it on top of that, and I'll do the exact same thing, opacity and multiply. All right, so you see how it's rounding out or applying grain to those edges for me. So I'll drop that opacity down to about 75, just eyeballing it as I go. Um, maybe I can just decrease the op uh, opacity for that and this. 
Uh, sorry, let's jump that back up to about 90 maybe. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna select it and control or command G to group it, and I'm going to move it to the correct layer. Okay, cool. Last thing that we need to do is just generate a, um, a like a flattened base. Uh, so we'll sort of just draw this out like so. Um, and I'm just going to apply like a basic layer. Um, so yeah, we'll set this just as like a nice basic gray. Um, I'll duplicate it. And so you can do that as well by holding um, Option or Alt and Shift, and then you can use your arrow keys as well. All right, so yeah, just a, a nice little tip there. Cool. Again, we'll apply our gradient, we'll apply a linear gradient, and I'm just gonna set that angle to 90 degrees. Let's zoom in here. We'll add another point, just like we did before. Uh, let's delete that one, put an accent there, black. Uh, gray and let's drop the opacity of this to about 50 as well okay um, and then we can just go to effect texture grain um, and we'll just adjust that then as well so I want a bit of a stronger contrast and uh, uh, sorry intensity and stronger contrast and we'll just say okay and we can set that to multiply as well and we can drop that opacity down a little bit, just overall. Okay, so now we've got all of our shapes. Let's get a layer for this. So I'll group it and drop it onto our new layer and we'll just call this base. All right, and I'll just call this BG for now and we're gonna hide that. Okay, so now we've got everything that we need. All right, so now it's time to bring it in to After Effects itself. So I'm just going to save this. I'll dump it onto the desktop for now and I will call it um, sort of assets. All right. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna close Illustrator. Uh, for those of you who know that you can sort of like cross adapt, um, we're gonna be doing that or I can, well, I'll be showing you that either way. Okay, so what we're going to do now in the next video is we're going to jump into the actual animation of this. So um, let's just quickly set this up before I forget to do that for the next video. Assets, import as composition retain layer size. We can open that up. You'll see it makes a composition for us and we'll double click on that and we've got all our assets floating in space. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video and we'll jump into the actual animation of this. Ciao.